Well, as Pastor Justin shared, the, the, ser the series we're calling Christo Currency. And we're talking about you know, the resources that God provides for us in our lives and, and how do we use those resources that God ha has given to us. You know, it's, um, you know, as we talk about these biblical principles, we're going to talk about how these biblical principles relate to how it is that we use God's resources. You know, we can do more with what we have with God than we can do without God. We can do more with what we have with God than we can do without God. Now, oftentimes, God's kingdom principles, biblical principles, run uh, against the grain of the values of our culture. Now, if the values of our culture were perfect, and what, it, what was needed to, to ultimately live as God wants us to live, there would be no need for biblical principles. But because there's a conflict between biblical principles and, and the, the philosophies of, of this world, you know, we are better served you know, to embrace those biblical principles rather than the, the, the principles of the world. We can do more with God using biblical principles than we can do by ignoring those principles. Well, have you ever experienced a time in your life when you've experienced the God factor? And what I mean by that is that you, you've had an experience in your life that, that, that God has been involved, and because God has been involved, it's made a difference. The, the, the outcome has been different because God was, was present, because God was involved. You know, I had... Um, had my surgery just uh, three months ago the, this past week. And, you know, as I went into to that surgery, there, there was a, a sense of, of peace. And, and you know, I, I believe that that was a, a, a God thing. I, I believe that that was a, an issue of, of answered prayers, of many of, many of your prayers. I, I had a sense going into to that surgery that, that I was resting in, in the hollow of God's hands. You know, when it comes to financial resources in, in my life, I, I followed a, a practice, you know, ever since I had my first job at, at the age of 15, of, of giving a percentage of, of what I earned, giving that to, to God. Now, what I gave at 15 was less than, than what I give now as, a, as, as an older adult. <laughs> that? Um, seasoned, is that it? Okay. Um, but, but the issue is that, you know, giving that, that percentage, you know, making that a, a practice of always giving in, in gratitude and in thankfulness to, to God. And, you know, one of the things that I, I've learned about that, that principle of, of giving in my life, of, of always giving a, a percentage of of um, the resources God has entrusted into, into my care, one of the things that I've learned is that I always have enough. You know, I've always had enough for, for what I've needed. Now, I may not have always had what I wanted, but God always provided what I've needed. You know, and so even though I've given, you know, I still had a, enough for myself. This morning, I want us to, to consider a, a parable that Jesus told in Matthew 25. And, and you've probably heard this parable before, and, and some of you may know it as the parable of the talent. Now, uh, the, the particular New International Version that I'm using the, this morning, you know, instead of using the word talent, uses a bag of gold. Now, a talent in Jesus' day was, was a currency, but, um, but also, as, as we think of a, a talent of, of being a, a skill or a, an ability, sometimes that can be confusing with, with this parable. So, so if you're used to the parable of the talent, be aware. I'm not telling you a new, new parable today, but it's, it's that parable, but it's using bags of gold in, instead of a talent to describe that currency. The kingdom of heaven is like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. 
To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to their ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. And also the one that with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Then when the, the master returned from, from the journey and, and asked the servants to, to give an account, it, it says that the, the one who had, uh, had five bags of gold had doubled it, and now he had, had ten bags. The one that had two bags you know, had, uh, now had two more. And to each of these servants, the master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Now, the one who had been only given one bag of gold, he didn't do anything with it. He went out and, and buried it because he, he didn't want anything to happen to it. He wanted to hold on to it. He wanted to protect it. He wanted to be able to return it to, to the master when, when uh, he was called to give an, a, an account. But the master was not pleased with, with his actions. And actually what the, the master did is he, he took that, that one bag of gold from, from the, the servant that held on to it. He, the master took it back and he gave it to, to the one that, that already had 10. You know, here's the cryptocurrency principle that I want you to, to see this morning. And that is that God wants us to be a river, not a reservoir. A river flows. You know, as water flows down the river, what happens? More water fills in its place. You know, in a river, there, there's a, a flow that the, the water keeps moving that as, it, as it moves past, more takes, it, takes its place. But a, a reservoir, on the other hand, is a, is a static body of water, and it, it, it holds, it, it, it contains but there's no flowing that, that happens in, in a reservoir. In this morning's parable, the, the servant who is entrusted with five bags and the, the servant that's entrusted with, with, with two bags, they were rivers because they, they put their resources to, to work. They put their resources to, to work, and, and what happened is their, their resources were multiplied, and even at, at that point, the master then gave them greater responsibility. You know, the one who is faithful in a little will, will also be faithful in, in much. The, the master said, to the one who is faithful in a few things, I will entrust with more things. I will entrust greater responsibility. The act of, of being a, a river is that we allow God's blessings, we allow God's resources to flow into our lives or flow through our lives into the life of another person and, and making a difference in another person's life. God, as, as that happens, God continues to pour opportunities and resources into our life so that more can be poured into the lives of others. When we look at the servant that was only given one, one bag of gold, he, he, was, he did nothing with it. He, he was a reservoir. He, he wanted to, to protect it. You know, he, he wanted to, to make sure that uh, as, as he went on at, at that point that, that um, he could return to, to the master what, what he was given. But in the end, even what he was given was, was taken away from him. Worldly wisdom says that I need to hold on to, to what I have because if I don't, there won't be enough for me. God's w wisdom says that if I'm a river, if I'm a river of blessing, if I allow God's resources to flow through me into to the lives of others, God continues to pour more resources and more blessing into my life that I can bless the, the lives of others. So how do you use Christocurrency in your life? Do you treat the resources that God entrusts into your care? Do you treat it as if you're a river or are you a reservoir? Do you allow it to flow through you to, to bless others, or do you hold on to it for, for yourself? How do you use the resource of prayer? 
Is your prayer a, a laundry list of, of what it is that you want, or do you intercede on behalf of, of others? You know, are you a blessing in the lives of others as, as you intercede on, on their behalf? How about relationships? Do you only see relationships as, as, as something that is something that you can get something from? Or do you see a, a relationship of how it is that you can pour yourself into the life of another person uh, to, to make a, a difference in their life? What about financial resources? Uh, do you set aside a portion of what God has entrusted in, into your care to, to invest in his kingdom work? Or is it an issue that, that you think, oh, I've got to hold on to everything that I've got because if I don't, then, then I won't have a, enough for, for myself. What about your time and talent? Do you seek to use your time and talent uh, to pour into to the lives of others, to, to make a difference in, in the lives of others? Or is it an issue that I've got to hold on to my time and, and, and my talent because, uh, you know, because I, I want to keep it to my, myself. I don't want to waste it on, a, on another person because it's a, a limited resource. When it comes to God's blessing in your life, as, God's work, as God works in your life, do you tell others, do you give testimony of what it is that, that God has done? Or is it an issue that you, you keep that to, to yourself? God wants you to be a river. He wants the, the resources that he pours into your life to flow through your life and to make a difference in the lives of others. So this week, I want to challenge you to, to think about, to consider, you know, do you live your life? Do you live out biblical principles in, in a way that you are more of a river or a reservoir when it comes to these blessings that God has put in your life? Let us pray together. Lord, as you call us to, to be rivers of blessing, may you use us to indeed make a difference for your kingdom. Lord, may you put a, a spirit of, of generosity. May you put a, a spirit of, of concern and compassion in each one of us in order that we might make a difference for your kingdom here on earth. Through Christ our Lord, we pray.